At this field day in southern New South Wales, Professor Phil Hind knows he has his work cut out for him. I work with the two most sceptical groups of people on the planet, farmers and scientists, you know. No one believes anything is going to work, but, it, but it, I think this will. We've been working on an alternative to shearing for about 20 years now, and people would be aware of bioclip and robot shearing and so on. We took a different approach to those. They were basically trying to replicate shearing, you know, getting the wool off by cutting it. One of them cut it, bioclip cut it with a chemical, and robot shearing was using the same sort of equipment to cut wool. In case you missed it, about two decades ago, Bioclip emerged and was touted as a biological defleecing process. Sheep were given a single vaccination of something called epidermal growth factor, a naturally occurring protein that caused wool fibres to break. The fleece was then shed into a net the sheep was wearing and later removed. We took a completely different approach to that. We decided that if it was possible to make wool weak enough to be easily broken by a non-cutting machine, but strong enough to stay on in the field, that's a pretty big ask. And probably 20 years ago, we got some way towards that. We, we got a long way, actually. We created a weak point. We could break it with a little simple machine that didn't cut you. But there was something missing, and that was we were doing it with a protein called Zane. And Zane is part of corn protein. And when we fed that to sheep, we found that it created the weak point we wanted. But we knew that feeding wasn't the way to go. We knew that we had to have better control of how much the animal got and for a short period of time. So we, we needed an injectable. And that's where we've made the big breakthrough now. So how is this different to Bioclip? which was taken off the market nearly 10 years ago due to lack of industry support. This is a completely different system. The idea is we create the weak point with an injection, which is done the same as farmers do for vaccinating sheep, uh, subcutaneous, under the skin, and we wait two or three weeks, maybe four weeks, for the wool to grow under that weak point, and then we break it with a simple machine that just takes it off with no combs and cutters, in fact, we hope it'll be done w without any people involved. It'll just be done with an automatic machine. And that's a game changer. Phil Hind is confident farmers could take care of injecting their flock. It's also suitable for pregnant ewes, unlike Bioclip. We're aiming for an injectable um, that farmers can do themselves. So line the sheep up in a race, under the skin, simple, quick, configured for body weight. So you, you have to take into account body weight, but that can be done now put the sheep out again, two or three weeks at your convenience, four weeks, um, and bring them back in and the machine takes it off. There's more than 60,000 wool growers in Australia and many are struggling to find shearers. It's hoped that new research into biological wool harvesting will give growers more options when it comes to removing the fibre. You just do a what we call a harvestability score. It's, it's like a pluck score, you take a staple, and you can very easily train yourself to know that it's perfect for harvesting. While Merino sheep and crossbreds have handled the injected protein, meat sheep have been a more challenging code to crack. The reason it, it didn't work in our experiment this time round with meat sheep was because meat sheep grow wool so slowly that it, the, the mechanism doesn't trip itself up. But when we get the injectable, we can dial that up and make sure it does knock the, the follicle um, process. A visible advantage from biologically harvesting wool is the clean skin left on the sheep. I reckon if you lined up a mob of sheep over here that have been shorn traditionally, and you lined up ones that we've done with our system, you'd automatically say these, these just look better. Each follicle is hit with the agent at exactly the same time, so every follicle on the sheep is affected at the same time. Right now, Phil Hind is reticent to forecast how much it will cost farmers. Very early days to start predicting costs, to be honest. At the moment, the agent that we're as our best candidate, I costed at 
the extraction that we're doing is about 20 cents a dose. Now, that's not what it's going to cost when it gets onto the market, but we're in the right ballpark, right? While Phil and his team of researchers have worked out how to weaken the fibre via an injectable, they now need help with an engineering solution to remove the wool. They've called on the expertise of engineer Rodney Brook. Our challenge is to produce a device that will break that wool, take it away from the skin effectively and efficiently uh, and uh, not hurt the shearer or the uh, sheep. At the field day, the engineer had a display of all the different tried, tested and failed devices. We've tried duck pluckers, rotary brushes, devices where you've got pins and advancing and retiring from a surface. We've also tried uh, reciprocating comb devices. Uh, they seem to be uh, the, the best at the moment. So what's happening here is Rodney's machine is going across the sheet at about the same speed as a shearing handpiece it's just peeling the wool off and the wool is just falling in front of the device. Professor Phil Hind also has a few ideas. At the moment we're looking at kind of plucking machines and so it just moves across the body. When we get it right, the wool peels off the front of that plucking device and just we, we, we hope to remove it then with a, a vacuum system. I don't think it'll come off as a fleece. I think we'll end up sucking it off with vacuum and it'll be treated as fibres. Wool grower funded research, development and marketing body Australian Wool Innovation has sunk $1.4 million into this research so far. This is the number one priority. We're regularly told that by wool growers across Australia that we need to sort this, this issue out. Uh, and we are prepared to invest, invest heavily in that space. At the moment that uh, investment has been reasonably moderate. But there will be development of technology for removing wool uh, and who knows what other things are required in the future. But the board are very committed to taking this right through the commercialisation and, and, and uh, providing another tool in wool growers, uh, in wool growers shed. The COVID-19 pandemic and closed international borders created a national shearer shortage. It showed Australia's wool industry the risk of relying on seasonal shearers particularly from New Zealand. While AWI chairman Jock Laurie will continue to use shearers if he can, he's open to biological harvesting if he needs to. What I want is choice. I need to be able to shear at the right time. I need to be able to shear and the cost of shearing needs to be at an affordable rate. And I need to be provided with the tools to allow that to happen. And if it turns out that, that I need to use biological shearing because the shearers are held up somewhere, then I won't hesitate in using it. It's really important that the industry can get their sheep shorn on time and that they can put it around a budget that actually allows them to stay in the industry. And so what this is all about is developing the technology to allow them to do that, to have choice. And without that, we're losing growers out of the industry. We now know we can go bang. This field day, hosted by Australian Wool Innovation at Canago in southern New South Wales, was the first opportunity most people in the wool industry have had to see biological wool harvesting in action. George Millington from renowned South Australian merino stud Collinsville was pretty impressed. If there's anything that we can invest in as an industry to actually try and make sheep farming more attractive and try and make wool growing more attractive and easier for the grower to do, I think we should do it. From what I've seen today, it's probably more being able to give a grower who wants to shear 200 sheep and is unable to get shearers for the day, but I think there'll still be a lot of room for large contract shearing teams uh, to shear in commercial situations. Ian Lugston and his family used Bioclip on their merino flock for several years, so he was keen to see the difference, especially since the nets that were used in the Bioclip process have been ditched. The only problem we had with it was getting the wool out of the nets. Because we have a lot of trefoil, um, the, the issue then was it took quite a while to get the wool out of the nets. From what he's seen from the new research, it's the animal welfare benefits that impress him. So the animal doesn't have a hot hand piece over it at all, and you can guarantee there's no skin pieces. Yeah, at the end of the day, um, I think it's a um, it's a better option, or it's a, 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 a better option for harvesting. Yes. Interestingly, the younger generation had more concerns. I think with the wool removal, I'd like to see it come off as more of a full fleece, maybe the main line fleece, and then your skirtings off separately. Uh, what we saw today was 
more like shearing in a traditional sense. I think if you're going to do that, you may as well just just run them in and shear them rather than injecting, letting them out, bring them back in. Uh, it looked quite slow, uh, and, but it's very early days. I actually personally think that we need to be putting more um, emphasis or, or, or money into uh, training shearers. I think that not just the, the, uh, the physical part of shearing, but more the, the lifestyle and welfare and, and, uh, and fitness of, of shearers. I think that um, it's a professional industry. It's, it's, a, it's as much a physical act as, as playing footy. And I think if you treat it that way and treat the lifestyle and, um, and your financials that way, I think that that could have bigger outcomes for shearers, I think, than, than anything else, to tell you the truth. Those devoted to ensuring the Australian wool industry continues to operate at a higher standard believe shearers and wool handlers won't be out of a job anytime soon. Shearing is very important to our family. I have two daughters and a son who are shearing, so it's very close to my heart and um, it's a great industry for them and they've really um, found some great advantages in being in that industry. Um, I do, don't see this as being the, the, you know, the end of shearing and hopefully a lot of young people will come on board and see wool harvesting, wool classing and, and uh, wool handling as being a great career to be in. Shearer trainer Brian Sullivan, who was a shearer for more than 40 years, isn't worried about losing his job. It won't be up and running, I don't think, before I retire. There you are. So I watched it yesterday and um, seen what they said they have achieved and I personally think that the young blokes around here do a better job than what it was doing yesterday. Even the man behind the breakthrough research knows this won't do shearers out of a job. We're not aiming to get rid of shearing. We're aiming at coming up with an alternative that people can have at their disposal if they can't get shearers, which has been a problem through the pandemic. Um, and if that happens again or something else happens again that limits shearing availability, we want an alternative. We can't have the industry just stop. John Roberts, who heads up Australian Wool Innovation, is prepared to spend more money to make biological wool harvesting work. He's now calling for anyone with engineering solutions for removing the weakened fibre to pitch their ideas. We want to spend as much as is needed on this project. Um, right now, it's, it's apparently it's enough, but I think going forward, when we get to the harvesting piece, we're going to need to invest more money, absolutely. Beyond removing the wool from the sheep, John Roberts sees benefits further down the processing pipeline. One of the things we've always been proud of as a nation is that we've led the world in terms of wool preparation standards. We don't want to lose that, and I think that's, that'll probably obviously be a burning question for a lot of people. But, you know, my mind immediately goes to, you know, taking the wool straight off the back into the wool pack and hopefully preparing, you know, maintaining those preparation standards or even improving them. So, look, I think it's going to be something we're going to have to look at really closely, that we don't compromise the quality of the clip. While the research is promising, biological wool harvesting still has some way to go before growers will be using it on farm. There's a journey, there's APVMA approvals, there's, there's dosage trials we have to do. Look, I, I, I'd, I'd be loath to, to promise a, a date, but I can't see anything in the, in the next two years. But hopefully after that we might start to see things materialise, but it's going to be a journey. However, the professor leading the charge is determined to see it through. This has been something I've been working on for 20 years. I'm not going to let it go, um, and I, I think it will work. I, I'm not dying till this happens. <laughs> that, 